So as someone who spends a lot of his time on the internet, my web browser is quite important to me. And I use Firefox, I've been using Firefox for a million years, you know, maybe a really long time ago I used some fork of Chrome. It wasn't on Google Chromium, you know, like a good one. It was like a, a weird, bloated shit fork, fork of Chrome, which had like a built-in like web torrent functionality and, and it wasn't very, I didn't, this was ages and ages ago. I, and then before that I used regular Chrome, this is when I was like 13, didn't know what fuck a browser was. Saw adverts for Chrome and I was like, Chrome will go faster than a bullet? That's so fast! Because they used to do a, or something like that, they used to do a, a advert where Chrome loaded a web page faster than a bullet. I don't know, but that was like many, many, many years ago. Ever since I've known anything about caring about anything, I've used Firefox, and um, I have my Firefox, I have quite a few add-ons. Um, the two that are the most important, well, three, three add-ons that I could not live without are uBlock Origin, obviously, you can't be dealing with ads on the internet. Uh, uBlock Origin, uh, t Tridactyl. Tridactyl adds Vim-like keybinds to Firefox, so you never have to use the mouse if you don't want to. You can... I am so used to Vim-like keybinds that anytime I use someone else's computer or I use a browser like Tor that doesn't have any of these uh, keybinds, I just muscle memory use my keybinds in the browser and then I'm like, oh yeah, only I... only Tridactyl has that. Um, and then the third thing is ff 2 mpv which I've already made a video about um, on this channel, but essentially it's it lets you uh, open YouTube videos in MPV directly from Firefox by just uh, left-clicking, uh, right-clicking, I mean, and selecting open in MPV, or by clicking something in the top, like uh, here. There's a little button up there. <laughs> uh, and that lets me play my YouTube videos in MPV, which I do probably about 80% of the time I play my YouTube videos in MPV. Um, now, I would normally say uh, Sponsor Block would be in my uh, add-ons I can't live without. Since Sponsor Block's broken, I don't know what it is. I've tried updating it. It seems I seem to be using the latest version. It no longer automatically skips the videos, but it still works with MPV Sponsor Block, um, which mean which is the sponsor block integrated into MPV and so if I so that's not a problem because again I play probably about 80% of my YouTube videos in MPV um, however here's the thing so uh, today I was looking through my add-ons I don't remember why I was I was just going through my add-ons page and I noticed at the bottom of the I scrolled down to the bottom and it says recommended extensions right and I was like that's kind of like adware. I don't like the fact that it has recommended extensions like that. I know that Firefox aren't making any money off of that, but like, that's like adware. And then the second thing I noticed is it said in a little box, these extensions are based on the extensions you already have and your like browsing habits or something like that. Or I don't remember exactly what it said, but something along that. And I was like, hold on a fucking minute. That's fucking spyware. The, why is this enabled? Now, Credit, credit where it's due to Firefox, right next to that, there is a hyperlink directly to the settings page where you can turn off tracking. But here's the thing, I know for a fact that I hardened the fuck out of my Firefox, right? I went through a bunch of guides editing the, um, what is it, about config, about config page on Firefox, and I have, I have hardened the fuck out of my Firefox, removed all telemetry and stuff like that. So what must have happened is that when Firefox updated, as it does occasionally, it must have turned the telemetry back on, because I know for a fact I would have turned that shit off, right? Now, that's, like, not quite a deal-breaker. Like, the fact that I could just turn it back off again, that's nice. That it's, it even gave, like, it told me in bold letters, like, this is using data collected from you, here's how you turn it off if you don't want it. That's how, it, like, that's the least you could do. The best you could do is to not have that turned on at all. And so I was thinking, maybe I should try moving away from Firefox, especially because I've been noticing that Firefox is a little slow to load web pages, especially now because on my Mac, Firefox is just broken. 
In fact, Firefox is kind of broken on this computer too. Sometimes it just doesn't play YouTube videos. I don't know why. I have no idea why. You'll try and press play and it just won't work. I don't know why. Doesn't seem to be a problem in other browsers. So all of this is compounding and I'm thinking, maybe I should just fucking switch browsers. Maybe I should bite the bullet and switch browsers. I thought about switching to Brave first and that's what I did on my Mac. I switched to Brave on my Mac. Uh, it's decent. It's fine. The inbuilt ad blocker in Brave is not as good as uBlock Origin so I just installed uBlock Origin because it uses the Chrome store which is useful. There's also a, a Chrome add-on that adds Vim keys which is not as good as Tridactyl but pretty good and I don't use MPV on my Mac because well I don't really use my Mac to watch YouTube videos that much um, so it's not that necessary but I, I switched to Brave on my Mac. Um, I don't intend to switch to Brave on my ThinkPad, and here's why. Because I realized that I'm supposed to be the guy who's big into minimal software. Not the guy, but a guy who's big into minimal software. And yet, I'm using a modern web browser which is bloated as fuck. Why? I'm going to switch to a minimal browser. There's basically two main minimal browsers that people use. One of them is the, the suckless one, which, which Surf, which fucking sucks and, and uh, anyone who uses it is an idiot um, <laughs> or maybe they just have like spent hours and hours and hours uh, extending it and configuring it and stuff like I mean it's suckless it's suckless software it's the sort of it's a uh, it's very much the suckless kind of mindset where it's like oh you want you want tabs that's another program you have to install to make sure we have tab like all of that sort of thing which is fine you know if you if you're into that you're into that and it's fine right but I'm I didn't want to do that so the other minimal browser, there is a, there is others, I'm sure there's other minimal browsers out there, but the other one that I know about is Cute Browser. I have used Cute Browser as a secondary browser for also ages and ages. I have Cute Browser as my main browser on my Raspberry Pi, and uh, I used it for a bit in some other operating system. I think I, think I used it in um, NetBSD before I realized it wasn't really working, like it wasn't rendering web pages properly because it's NetBSD and nothing fucking works. The, the, the other thing about Cube Browser is it's way more um, customizable, extensible than Firefox is. Now, this is one of the reasons why I didn't want to switch to Brave, is Firefox, I have my Firefox riced with a user Chrome CSS um, to fit my, my, my computer rice, um, and I, I quite like it. But the thing about Cube Browser is it looks even better by default. I mean, I can rice it and I will rice it. I'm gonna change the font and I'm gonna change some stuff about it. I, I will spend, sort of, I will try and configure it a bit. But also, Cube Browser, if you know anything about Cube Browser, the main appeal of Cube Browser is it has Vim keybinds by default. That's the whole gimmick of the browser is that it's a minimal browser with Vim keybinds by default. And that is perfect for me. So I've sort of had Cube Browser on the back burner for ages. There is a main reason why I never, and this is a deal breaker for a lot of people with Cube Browser, why I didn't switch to it as my main browser sooner. I'm not saying I will necessarily switch to it as my main, main browser now, but I do want to give it a try, a serious try. Uh, I've never given it, you know, I've only used it occasionally, but I want to give it a serious try, and here's why. The reason I've never done it before is because it doesn't have ad block. The ad block in Cube Browser is eh, it's, it's not that good, but, Apparently, and I need to do more research, there is a way to add, like, um, I don't know, there's, there's, there's some, apparently, a way to add a better ad block, like, you just have to edit the config, and you can make it read from, like, block lists, like other ad block servers, uh, services do, like, you block it, like, they all use these big block lists, um, and you can actually make, brave, uh, make cute browser read from those block lists and block them. I'm literally researching that right now, but, and here is maybe the thing that is the absolute winner for me, for Cute Browser, is, this is maybe the reason why I'll switch, the one annoying thing about FF to MPV is not really a problem with the add-on, the add-on is doing the best of, making the best of a bad situation, the biggest problem is that you have to click a button to open, uh, to open MPV, to open the video in MPV, you have to, you have to left click I mean, you have to right click, hold down right click as you move to the through the context menu and select play an MPV, which is just slightly too annoying for me. I mean, it's not too annoying that I don't do it many times each day when I'm watching YouTube, but it's slightly annoying. 
In Qt Browser, you can make that a keybind. I have bound, first thing I did, I bound capital X to hint mode, which will open whatever I press, whatever I select in MPV, and it fucking, it just works. Look, check it out, hold on. Uh, I currently have the, 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 okay, I currently have the, the keyboard hints uh, open because I was, um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, uh, so in, in, in Tridactyl, um, new tab is T, t tab open, whereas in, it's not the same as that in Cube Browser, it's capital O, which is open dash T, so open and then with the flag of new, in a new tab. Uh, so that kind of, th that's why I'm checking the cheat sheet. Some of the, I, I've been thinking maybe I should change, I don't know, like maybe I change that, but actually capital O is almost a better I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll change that to if I'll I'll change the binding so that it's T. Um, I know you can change key binds because it's open source free so free free open source software. Um, but if I go to YouTube real quick, um, I haven't got my ad block set up properly as you can see, uh, and I press X just like in Tridactyl and Vimperato and all the other things, it will open hint mode. But capital X, I select something like, uh, I don't know, one of these random videos. Let's go with uh, LA. That seems like an interesting one. Uh, I'm not signed in, so this is the default one. And it just opens in MPV. How great is that? How amazing is that? I don't have to go through the fucking trouble of uh, play in MPV. That, that, oh, it's so hard. It's so hard to do that. That is such a struggle. Um, <laughs> for, for me, the key binding is person. So that's really nice. That might be what sells me on this browser. The only thing I don't... The only thing I'm sketchy about is this ad blocking. If if I can get this ad blocking thing that I'm, you probably saw on my YouTube, uh, the video I'm watching, if I can get this to work, then... Uh, and it is good, it's just like, it's possible, then I will switch to Cute Browser. Because just for the fact that I can open YouTube videos in MPV, and other videos, it works with other video hosting sites too, um, if I can open them in MPV by, with a keybind, then that alone is a selling point enough to make me switch, let alone the fact that there's no telemetry, there's, and it's much more minimal, so it opens much faster, and I will switch to it as my default browser if I can get ad blocking to work satisfactor satisfactorily. Uh, yeah. So, 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 I've gone down a whole rabbit hole here. <laughs> I've ended up on Freetube. Freetube is a program. It's a YouTube front end. It's a free open source YouTube front end um, where, which allows you to import subscriptions, which is nice. You can import subscriptions without signing into Google. So I can, it's basically the best for privacy because like, or, you know, ungoogling your life, which is always a good thing, which is, you know, does ad block by default and everything. It's great. Only problem being, there's a, well, there's, there's, don't, the only problem, it's not using MPV. There's no way to make it use MPV. As far as I know, I actually haven't done that much research. Maybe someone somewhere has made a way to, uh, that you can use MPV uh, to play these videos, which would make it perfect. If this is the case, I'm never using a web browser again to view YouTube. Um, it's good. It's good. I like the fact that you can pipe your videos through Invidious, which means, you know, for extra privacy. You can even use Tor. You can even pipe it through Tor to really mask yourself. I like that it, it runs pretty fast, it runs pretty solid. It has pretty much all the functionality you'd want, but no Vim keys, no fucking Vim keys. Come on, it's fucking 2021, give me Vim keys. No Vim keys, and using this player, I don't know, I don't know what player this is, but it's not MPV, which is how I like to watch all videos. Because MPV is just the best video player invented by humanity so far. I don't know why you would ever want to use anything else other than MPV. Um, that's just annoying. 
But hey, this is something. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, and now a network error caused the media to download to fail part. Okay, so you see, it's a bit buggy. It's a bit buggy, but subscriptions work. Look, I'm getting all my subscriptions. I'm getting all my subscriptions. I can scroll down pretty far. It's all that's all good. These buttons work. The 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 home end buttons, page up, page down, those all work. But no Vim keys, no JKHL. That's annoying. That's annoying. I don't like having to scroll by having to scroll by holding down middle mouse and scrolling this. Like it's better than ninety percent of computing, but it's not as good as Vim keys. <laughs> uh I mean, I guess I suppose I can, can scroll with page up and page down if I really want to use a keyboard, but it's not J and K. I need J and K. So that's a bit annoying. Other than that, this is a great way to watch YouTube videos in a privacy-respecting manner without having to go anywhere near Google and with no ads, which also overcomes the cute browser problem. Um, as for the cute browser problem, let's see how that's going. So here's cute browser. I have these errors. Um... I, which I haven't bothered to get rid of yet. I've started to customize it. So I've got my start page is now about blank. And um, so that's nice. I can just type in YT and go straight to YouTube. That's nice. Although I need to change it so that it goes to YouTube slash feed slash subscriptions, actually. That's a thing I'm going to do right now. Um, maybe. I'll do that in a second. But anyway. So that's kind of neat, and I have the the fucking um, open an MPV thing. So what I want is this, but without having to sign in. Is is there a web app that does like if is there something that does everything FreeTube does, but in a browser, so that I can use Cute Browser to do it, so that I can have Vim keys and MPV. If so. I I I want it. So, this is me trying to use the newest version of YTF Center as a subscription manager for my YouTube subscriptions. I tried. There is, by the way, the, the, this is not the same page. This is still scrolling. It's just downloading thumbnails forever. Hey, we did it! And now we finally have. After my RAM was at a hundred percent, by the way, um, we have. Um, things working. Uh, I think this is an appropriate thumbnail to be using. Why is it lagging like crazy? The video. Anyway, so we had, this is actually genuinely working. Um, it's not quite perfectly in order. Like, it's also missing some videos. I don't know why it's missing some videos, but it's pretty good. And like, this is, this does work well. Like, you can use this to watch YouTube videos in your subscription feed. The only problem is it checks every single fucking subscription you have, um, which is a lot in my case, as you can see, and downloads every single thumbnail. Um, I hope it deletes them once you no longer need them because it's a lot of images. Uh, what is this? The systemic... By Bo I'm not even subscribed to this person. I think I must have put that in by mistake or something. But what is Spinoza's God? I don't know. Let's find out. What is Chanism? And what if Minecraft was mechanical? All of these questions we may never know the answers to. But anyway, yeah, look, like, like this, I did. This, this is still outdated. It, it, when I did this, I was subscribed to George Not Found because I just spent like, in because <laughs> I'm an idiot. I, I I was just like, if this works, it'll be worth it. And my idea was simply to. Um, basically, in order to do YTFZF subscriptions, you have to make a file with the URL of every single channel you're subscribed to. So I just went through my subscription feed and copy-pasted every single channel to a document somewhere on my computer, which, um, you know, has a list of all the subscriptions, but obviously that document doesn't update automatically, and so I'm still subscribed to a bunch of channels on here that I am no longer subscribed to, um, and not subscribed to some newer channels that I've subscribed to. But all of that aside, that that is a bit annoying, not really 
that usable if I'm, but I'm not, like, it's quite rare that I subscribe and unsubscribe from new channels and stuff, so whatever, that's, that's okay, it's like a bit annoying, but whatever. The main problem is that it takes forever. It took long enough to come up with all my subscriptions that, that I had time to grab my phone, plug my phone in, open up the camera and start recording, and there was still a bunch of time before it actually loaded everything. In the meantime, used up 100% of my uh, RAM, CPU, whatever. Very, very heavy. It's a very heavy... I mean, it's doing a lot. It's fetching... It's checking every... It checks every single... It, it doesn't use, like, a feed. Like, like FreeTube uses a .json file and, like, an R, somehow converts it to an RSS... I don't know how it works, but, like, it does it quickly and... It's, it's something. Don't ask me how it works. But this one, I'm pretty sure, just manually checks every single channel to see if it's uploaded a new video. Um, which obviously is a lot of work for your computer to do. Now, uh, listen, YTFCDF is a great program. I've talked about how good it is before. Um, it's great for searching YouTube. I use it pretty regularly in D-Menu for searching YouTube. You know, I don't know. I've made a video about it uh, ages ago about how based it is. Um, like, it is genuinely good. It's just uh, not the best as a subscription, terminal-based subscription manager thing. Uh, so that's not really an option because of all of those disadvantages. I mean, it, it, it like the point of a terminal program, like the, re the appeal of it would be that it is uh, lightweight but it, and quick. You know, like, that's the that's why terminal-based programs are so great, is because they're lightweight and fast. And in my particular... You know, it, this would work amazingly if you were just... Okay, if I, if I was like, I'm going to have a separate subscription feed just for ASMR videos, for example, or just for Linux-related videos. Like, I could just put in the, like, five... If I had, a, 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 like, a subscriptions in YTFCDF that was just, you know, Luke Smith, DistroTube, these these channels in in uh what's that guy whatever i don't remember it doesn't matter but like if i for example just a, a niche part of my subscriptions then it would work great because it would only be set like that if it's only searching like five or six channels or whatever it's fast as fuck i've tried i tried it it's actually fast as fuck and um it works great doesn't work for my 1000 channels that I'm subscribed to. So unfortunately not an option. There's another terminal based YouTube subscription manager, um, which is I think literally just called YouTube dash subscriptions. And that's also not very good. But that aside, uh, it doesn't work. Like I tried to get it to work for like an hour and I couldn't get it to work. I don't know why. I don't know what I was doing wrong. I just couldn't get it to work. I think it's because it uses Docker to install and I don't know how, to, I've never used Docker before. Um, so that's not a thing. Either way, there's nothing wrong with just using Cute Browser, I think. Like, Cute Browser is fine. I might want to remap... Do you remember a, earlier in this video? Maybe maybe I'll cut this out. Maybe that will be cut out in editing. So basically, I have a keybind to turn on, like, to lower my brightness and filter the blue light. And um, that is currently Alt-1. And then Alt-2 sets it back to normal. Um... I might want to rebind those because alt and then numbers changes tabs and that's quite useful but obviously that is overridden by the um the thing you know the the the, the brightness changing feature so that's a bit annoying uh, but I think this is actually optimal YouTube browsing I, I actually honestly I think like just opening in because ad block like on the subscription page there is no ads and then MPV, there is no ads, so there's no. I'm not seeing any ads. I think this is as optimal as I can get for my specific needs. Is cute browser, MPV, keybind, everything's nice, everything's how I like it. Because cute browser is pretty like uh, lightweight software, doesn't put too much strain on my computer, and MPV is obviously lighter weight than the actual YouTube player. So basically what I'm saying is I think that this is optimal. I think this is an optim as optimal as I can get. The only way 
that I could think of something that would be better than this is if there was a fork or something. If I learned to program and made a fork of FreeTube that used Vim keys or supported Vim keys and um, and here's the thing about FreeTube is it's literally unusable for me because the video doesn't work. Whatever video player they use, I don't know what it is, doesn't work. Like, if I pause the video, tab out, like, change change workspaces, and then the, tab back into it, it says video failed to load. It gives me an error. The video, like, errors out. I have to refresh the page, and, um, uh, like, it doesn't save my spot, so it, like, goes back to the beginning. That's not practical. Like, that's just annoying. Um, I suppose the only problem with Cube Browser is the ad block stuff. The only website I have, like, other than YouTube, what am I, like, what do I actually use that has ads on it? There's very little. I wonder if Google has ads. <laughs> I forgot. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I've tried to set up some ad blocking stuff in my config file. I don't know if it's worked. No, maybe. Yeah, see, there's no ads here. Like, you'd think that test would have some ads. Like, it should have a little ad thing, right? It should show, like, a little logo that says ad. What, what, what could I get an ad for? Um, I, maybe it has an ad block test. Oh, ad block test. Nice. Okay, yeah, I'll make it full screen for everyone. Ad blocking is enabled. So, uh, something is working. Something is working. Um, something I've done is working in my <laughs> config files. Um, it doesn't work on YouTube, but this is a thing. Like, you, YouTube's a weird case where, like, other ad blockers also don't work. It's not just that I didn't set it up properly. So, so, so something's not work. Something is working here. The other thing is that it doesn't really work on Nine Anime. Um, like, it, it, it does do tab hijacking and stuff, which is a bit fucking annoying. That, that stuff is automatically dealt with by an ad by by U block origin, but not dealt with um, here clearly. Uh, but that's okay because I'm just going to taunt the anime instead, and that's fine. The other thing, the reason I wanted to check out YTFCDF again is because they've actually the dev has added um, the sort tag um, modifier thing, which allows you to. Act to, to view subscription videos in chronological order, which is a really nice feature. Again, it's just a shame that um, I am, you know, my my particular use case is just ridiculous because I'm subscribed to a thousand people. I don't think the person who made this expected me to be expects anyone to be subscribed to a thousand people. Do you know what else is really fucking cool about YTFCDF, the the newest update? You can install it with one line. You literally. You literally just copy a one-line installation, and this just somehow mad. I don't know how the fuck this works, but I don't know shit about Linux or computer. I don't know what computer is, but this is to me. This is just actual magic. <laughs> like how the fuck does that work? I have no idea. But either way, YTFZF still works. Still a great program, just not for subscription browsing for me. Um. So my ad block is actually working, which is nice. Uh, I think that's all I had to say. Um, I'm just trying to check if this is... Oh, oh, okay, these are, like, telling me if I've passed... Okay. I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, not important. What's important is I want to go watch this Simple Flips video. <laughs> just another update in this wacky saga so that I found another subscription manager called Subtube which uses X SXIV it's kind of like you, you buy TFZF but instead of FZF it's using SXIV so it opens it up it open like it gives you a sub feed which you select using the GUI that is SXIV it's a, a very interesting idea um Unfortunately, it has the same problem as YTFZF, which is that you put in each of your subscriptions manually, URL by URL, and those things don't tend to work with 
well, I assume since YTFZF didn't work, that this one also won't work with my thousand channels. Um, so that's a shame. Uh, I installed it, tried it out, it seemed um, like an interesting project, but uh, not for my use case. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to stick with using a uh, web browser, unfortunately. So this is a major problem with Cube Browser. Although it's minimal, it's not secure. It's not very... Um, well, it, it may be secure, but it's not very privacy-oriented, rather, sorry. Um, which I suppose is also a part of security, but um, in a more abstract sense. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just done the, the EFF's privacy test, and on by Firefox, I, I get good scores on this. Uh, I don't get good scores for fingerprinting, but I get good scores for most other things. Um, and that's kind of a trade-off, because... Um, you know, the more things you have to protect your privacy, the more unique your browser's going to be. I have some things to protect myself from fingerprinting, like a user agent spoofer and stuff like that on Firefox. But, um, yeah, this is this is not good. So it's, it's like, I don't know. Like, this does feel good to use. I do enjoy using Cute Browser. I'm going to do some research and see if there's any, like, solid ways that you can harden this because um i don't know that's not really ideal is it i don't like being tracked um like to the point where i have my cookies auto delete on firefox which is a massive inconvenience for me because i have to constantly log back into any website as soon as i like the, as soon as i close a tab the cookies from that tab delete so i have to constantly um, you know, you know what I'm saying. I don't believe you can install extensions from any existing place in Cube Browser. I'm pretty sure you can't. So I'm going to need to do some research and see if there's any ways that you can make Cube Browser more private. Um, I'm not sure. What's been the point of this all? Why, why? Why Vim keys? Am I even a Vim user? Am I even a Vim user? Well, first of all, yes, I am a Vim user. Vim is right now set as my default text editor. Um, I wrote my dissertation in Vim very poorly. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I kind of knew, I knew what I was doing enough to write a dissertation in Vim, but I wasn't using it to its full potential. Although I did use a macro once <laughs> writing my dissertation, which I was very pleased with myself. It probably took me longer to do the task I did using the macro than it would have taken for me to just do it manually. But it was very cool when I did the macro and I, and it just did it automatically for me. It was very cool. It was, uh, it, it was just changing some text. It, it was like, it would search through, it would do like a find and replace basically for a certain word because I needed to check. But anyway, not important. Um, I'm, but I don't like the thing is to get really fast at Vim you kind of need to be someone who is really dedicated to using it every day and I just don't have a use I mean I probably use Vim like once a week or so like when I'm editing in the rare occasion like right now where I've been setting up a new program and so I've been going around editing dot files and stuff like that's if you're not editing your dot files in Vim like why? why? Why are you making life harder for yourself? It doesn't make any sense. I know people say the meme that Vim is difficult. Vim is not difficult to do, like, basic shit like editing dot files. And, yeah, you know, it gets difficult when you want to do advanced stuff. It's only difficult if you need, like, constant hand-holding and can't be bothered to read a fucking man page or do Vim Tutor for Vim Tutor takes like 15 minutes max 10 minutes to do Vim Tutor like just open up your terminal right now open up your terminal type in Vim Tutor and then press enter and do it and then come back to this video um so that happened I also accidentally <laughs> installed um oh fuck What's that? What's it called? I installed some sort of 
Hold on, I'm sure I'll find it. Uh, um, uh, danced, danced, which if you don't know, is like a, a, a notification, desktop notification daemon. I did it by accident. It was a dependency for, um, for the, the S X I V Ba like the the SXIV YouTube subfeed thing had Dunst as a dependency, so I installed Dunst, and then my computer automatically started. I don't know how. I don't know how it might how it did this behind the scenes magic. I assume just automatically started using Dunst to manage my notifications, and I noticed because the default look of Dunst is the ugliest thing you've ever seen. It's a giant blue, like bright, bright, like. Literally just maxed blue, you know, like there's the RGB, like it's just max blue values, like giant blue bar across the top of your screen. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Is that Dunst? So then I had to rise Dunst, which I didn't actually do. All I've done is f I literally Googled Dunst. I, when I say rise Dunst, I meant I had to make it look like usable. So I literally just Googled Dunst dot files clicked the first link and copied the fucking RC file, just copied and pasted it from GitHub. Um, I will I will make it fit with my rice. The only problem is you need to restart. I think you need to restart the whole computer for the changes to come to effect. I don't know. That's what seems to be what I had to do last time. So I don't know. But danced, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't, it's just a bit of a pain. But I could... It's. I mean, it is lightweight software, like it is a well-written piece of software, so I suppose it's probably a good thing, but whatever, not important. So Vim, like Vim is a nice text editor, and I do support Vim users. I don't have anything against Emacs users, though. I know a lot of people do. I don't. Uh, I just don't need Emacs. Like, I, I'm, Emacs is good for the people who need to use Emacs. I'm not one of those people. You know, I use Vim for text editing and that's it. Um, so I had to change some things about Cube Browser, but honestly, out of the box, other than ad blocking, it's fine. Other than ad blocking, and that's the main problem with Cube Browser, is the ad blocking is not as good as my, you know, just uBlock Origin, which is really weird because it uses, or well, the way I have it set up, it's supposed to be using the uBlock Origin, like, block lists, but it's not for some reason. I don't know why. And the more block lists you add, the the more CPU heavy it is, um, which is a bit annoying. Maybe I can make it a bit better. I'm not sure. I've been trying to do some research, but I seem to have it set up like decently well. But uh, I do still see ads, which is a bit annoying. Uh, so I, I yeah, that's one thing that that's pretty much the only negative is that you see ads. Oh, the other negative is the previously mentioned privacy concerns. I mean, on the one hand, um, it's good because uh, um, we know for a fact, since it's free open source software, that um, Cube Browser doesn't track users at all, nor is it owned by a major corporation. It's made by like a very small team of devs. Like They don't take telemetry. In order to report a crash, you literally have to type in colon report to, to do like a bug report or whatever, like a crash report. Um, and then it will send some telemetry data. Uh, like there, it's not tracking you and it doesn't benefit any large corporations. This is always a positive. And then it's not like they're taking bribes or anything. And you know, they're just making good software. Uh, so that's always a positive. The negative of course is what I previously talked about when I, you know, some of that stuff, but that's fine. I can deal with it. There are ways to harden it. Um, I've done taken a few steps. Um, I need to figure out a, a good setup so that I'm blocking third party cookies, I suppose. But, um, whatever, good enough. Usable for now. I can always improve it later. Um, the rice, honestly, I, I tried to fuck with it. I ended up putting it back to how it is out the box. I just like it. Like it's black and gray monotone. That's how my whole rice is pretty much like, yeah, I don't really see the need to fuck with it any more than like to change it any more than it already is. 
I like yeah again I changed it and then I was like eh, the defaults better and I just put it back to default um, the other thing is that capital J and capital K switch tabs right so like switching tabs right um, and by default in cube browser they're reversed as if as if you're reading from left to right where you're going previous it's very strange so imagine as imagine you're reading like a text like vim <laughs> you know the thing it's based on if you wanted to go to the next line the next line down you would press j right and so it then translates that to the next tab over which english speaking world would be that way would be j but j is to the left of k so it's weird you press the one to the left to go to the right you can also set up the the tab bar to be on the left or on the sides so then it actually makes sense because you're scrolling up and down but i don't like that i tried it out i thought it looked ugly um fortunately you can just rebind them all in a config file <laughs> you don't even have to use the config file i mean I, I just wanted to do ad blocking, like adva more advanced ad blocking and hardening, so I set up a config file. But you can just type in colon bind j previous tab, colon bind k next tab. You could just type those two commands in and it would be done, but I just put them in the config file because I have a config file, might as well use it. Um, so that's fixed how I like it. I also changed some other things that added. You, oh, you know what I'm always doing? I'm always going to YouTube. What if I add a keybind? O, E. That will take me to YouTube. And now I'm on my subscriptions feed. Uh, and obviously I did the capital X to bring up a hint mode that will open up whatever I select in MPV so I can watch YouTube videos. It's great. Honestly, happy with it. Happy with it so far. It's also faster. Like, it's, it's actually fast as fuck, boy. It's actually fast as fuck. I'm su I was surprised, but it's actually fast as fuck. And another thing, it's um, which makes it feel faster, even though it's not actually faster, is when you're using Tridactyl or an equivalent uh, plugin for Firefox or Chrome or whatever to give you Vim-like bindings. Um, the plugin only loads after the web page is loaded, or at least partially loaded, I think, right? So like. If you accidentally click something and you want to exit out of that tab, pressing D won't work until the tab's loaded, which is a bit annoying because you have to wait until the tab loads to exit out of it, or you have to move your fingers and like click on the tab and it's annoying, especially when you have my vice where the tab bar is as small as possible to maximize screen real estate. Um, I've always found that annoying, whereas with Cute Browser, the, the keybinds are built directly into the browser, so no matter how quickly you press D, it's going to close the tab before bothering to load the page. The priority is much better. It feels much smoother and nicer. Um, so that's nice. It did have one minor slowdown where it froze for a minute. The entire browser froze for a minute. It wasn't a whole minute. It was probably like 10 seconds, but felt like 10 years. <laughs> that was a little strange, but I, um, I don't know. It was just after restarting my whole computer, so maybe something was loading in the background, filling up all my processes. I don't know how computers work. Um, what else? That's it. Oh yeah, I was talking about what's the point of key commands. What's the point of doing anything, everything with a keybind? Well, I do it because it's just comfy. It's just the most comfy for me. I like binary inputs. You know, I once said to myself in a dream, I once received a message in a dream, and the message said, Everything in this house is invisible, binary, and dog clerk. That's what the message said in the dream. And we have reached... This is, this is um, you know, how my, everything in this house is invisible, binary, and dog clerk. I have yet to figure out what the fuck dog clerk means. But binary, I figured out. See, I like buttons. Because a button is a binary input. You're either pressing it or you're not pressing it. I mean... 0.5a presses, whatever, but <laughs> you, you're you pressing the button or you're not pressing the button. Whereas mouse input is, well, it's not analog, but there are as many options as there are pixels on the screen. And maybe even sub-pixels, I don't know how it works, but there are as many options as there are pixels on the screen, which is not 
precise. Whereas a binary button, you're either pressing it or you're not pressing it. It's as precise as you can possibly be. Um, that I like that. I like precision. I like making sure that I'm doing something accurately, as accurately as possible. I also just rest my fingers naturally. You know when you have a keyboard, there's a, a little knob, a little nodule on J and F, right? If it's a decent keyboard, there's a little nodule to, so that you can find home work, right? And because the nodule's there, I just naturally always, since I first started using a computer, would rest my fingers there because that's clearly where you're supposed to rest your fingers. And so that's the most comfortable position for me to be in, as well as the most ergonomic position to be in, right? Um, and so having to move from that position as little as possible is simply optimal for me. Same reason why I have this touchpad disabled. Um, I have literally, today I was thinking, I might gut the computer and like open it up and actually disconnect the cable that connects the touchpad to the motherboard because that's how much I hate the touchpad. But I don't think I'm going to do that in case I fuck something up. I, and I have it disabled, like, the software, so it doesn't matter, but I considered it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a nice thing. And it just lets me do things faster. Like, having keybinds just lets me do things faster. Having Vim just lets me do things faster. Like, the idea that you can, like, the, the key Vim idea that you can specify the amount of times you want something to happen, and then just an action. So, like, you could press J once, or you could type 9J, and it will scroll down nine times, you know, something like that. That's just neat to me. Um, you know, I don't really see the reason to use 9J in a browser, but in Vim, you're going to be using that a lot. Um, and it, just the fact that I can transfer that muscle memory is useful. I like the, like, if you're on a mouse-based browser and you want to copy the current URL, then you normally have to like fiddle with shit, you know? Like either you're on a website that has a share button and you have to like click the share button, which is normally hidden in some context menu or something. Like you have to click the share button, then try and click and drag to copy the URL and then control C. You're using a keybind anyway, or worse, you're fucking right click, select, copy, and then you have to go over to whatever you want to copy it in, and you have to control V, so you're already doing keybinds. Well, in uh, Cube Browser, and also in Tradactyl, and all the other Vim-like stuff, just like in Vim, you know, there's Yank, so YY, Yank the current URL, now it's in my clipboard, I can just control V anywhere, anywhere I like, and it will be pasted, as I just did. That's incredibly useful to me. When I don't have that on a browser, I press YY and I'm like, oh yeah, that doesn't work because all browsers are stupid except for the one I use. Now, I still have Firefox installed. I'm not going to uninstall it. Firstly, because of the ad blocking and privacy. If I, if, I mean, ultimate privacy is Tor, but Tor doesn't block ads, which I've always thought was weird, but I suppose it's for fingerprinting purposes, which is, so there's probably a reason. Like Tor browser, not Tor the network, Tor Browser, I should specify. If I wanted to, I could run this through Tor. Um, I'm actually, you know, I don't, you know what I don't do? I don't make enough use of my Molvad subscription. <laughs> I, I should, um, wg-quick up, and then I won't tell you which one I'm connecting to. Um, Okay, we're now connected to my VPN, nice. That's privacy, right? Privacy? Now all of the fucking WebRTC shit that leaks through IP is leaking some other IP, so that's always nice. Um, and it doesn't really slow down my connection much. Not a shill. Hashtag not a paid shill for Molvad, but I do use their service. Um, yeah. This is this is a very autistic episode. This is a very autistic specific episode where I want to do things in a very specific way. I like doing I like my specific keybinds. You know, I've been frustrated because in Tridactyl, the one I'm used to, the the, the Firefox add-on, opening something in a new tab is T. But in this by default it's capital O. So in Trid O O in both is open, colon open which is how you just type in a new URL or web search.
but if you want to do that so it opens whatever you're searching in a new tab, in Cube Browser it's capital O, whereas in Tridactyl it's T for tab open, because in Tridactyl the command is tab open, whereas in Cube Browser the command is open and then with the flag of dash T to signify to do it in a new tab. Um, now I considered rebinding it to T, but I thought I kind of like the idea that it's capital O. Because you can do it with one hand, like, because you can just shift, um, there's, yeah, like, it does work. If it was, like, super O, I wouldn't be okay with that, because those two buttons are too far away from each other. It's not comfortable to do with one hand when you need to do things with one hand. Like, when I'm lying down, reaching over to my computer to open something, that's not acceptable. But shift O, I'm okay with, because you can do that with one hand, you know, using my little finger and my middle finger. It's like a perfect, perfect hand shape for me. To open a new tab. Um, so that does work. Uh, there's also G capital O will open the yes I'm learning. See things are different in Tridactyl but I like this more. This is actually a better system it's just gonna take me a while to because this this does it all with a system of flags which I like in Tridactyl these are all different commands whereas in this it's all open then with flags after it and I actually like that system better. And these keybinds make more sense when you're using the sort of flag system. Um, like, even though they're doing the same thing, they operate in a different way behind the scenes. But maybe I'll change the keybinds. I mean, you can do it if you want to. Um, I also, did I tell you, changed my bindings for the, the um, ma making the brightness and stuff go down and, and turn on my blue light filter. I changed it from Super 1 and 2 um, I mean, alt, it used to be alt one and two, sorry, uh, but now super one and super, super and the numbers changes my, um, workspace. It used to be alt, alt two to, I mean, alt one would turn on blue on and dim the brightness and alt two would set it back to normal. Whereas I changed it to alt N and M. Um, why? Because I want to change tabs with alt and the numbers because um, it's just quite a handy way to change tabs faster than spamming Jane, capital J and capital K. Not that I mind particularly spamming capital J and capital K, but, um, you know, why, why, why bother? If I have like, I mean, normally I don't have many tabs open anyway, um, but, you know, if I do, uh, what am I doing? I'm moving my tabs all over the place. Anyway, uh, if I do have m many tabs open, it's just faster to just alt and press the number rather than tabbing between them. So that's that's a good thing option to have when I'm not when I can't. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, I also set up um, various preferences like, hey, when you open when I when I open Cube Browser, uh, bring me back to whatever pages I was looking at. Like restart it from the last set session. Um, stuff like that, you know, basic stuff. And I rebound Super F, which used to open Firefox, which is why it was bound to F, but it now opens Cube Browser. Um, I also remembered today a keybind, when I, I say remembered, I found it in my SXHKDRC, a, com a keybind I, made, I wrote, completely forgot about, which is that I have Super P, which opens Nautilus, the file browser, but as you can see, I just pressed it. Let's wait for Nautilus to fucking open. For some reason, the first, when I restart my computer, or when I, when I boot up my computer, the first time I press Super P, or the first, even if I, it doesn't matter if I type in Nautilus in a, a terminal, or if I type, open it with D menu, no matter what happens, the first, when I first boot up my computer, it just takes fucking forever. After that, the first time, now, look, I'll quit out of it, and now it will open quickly, it will open instantly. Right? Now it will open instantly, but for some reason, the first time I build my computer, it takes forever, and I have no idea why. Um, but I remembered I brought bound Super Shift P to open Ranger, which is the file manager I actually use much more regularly than Nautilus. I only really use Nautilus, um, I don't know, not that often. When I need to, when for some reason I need to do something in a, that would be faster in a graphical editor. I mean, in a graphical um, file browser, which is not very often. Uh, although, I normally like moving files, because, uh, like, MV and stuff is fine, it does work, but clicking and dragging is faster. 
Oh, also, um, deleting Crash's Ranger for some reason. I've report. I well, no, I didn't report it, but I've seen that someone else has reported the bug report that deleting files crashes Ranger, and uh, they haven't fixed it. So if I need to delete something, I also have to do that in Nautilus, which is a bit annoying. I think there's another terminal-based file browser. I think it's called NNNN or something. Um, and that one probably doesn't have that problem, but I now have Ranger set up how I like it, so it's going to be annoying to move. I don't think I'm going to move. I, not that often that I have to delete a file. <sighs> so there you go. Optimal YouTube browsing and web browsing in general with Cube Browser. I'm actually quite happy. I didn't expect to be migrating browsers today. Um, but fuck you Firefox, fuck you to the Mozilla Foundation open source bullshit. Where's your fucking free software, man? Fuck Mozilla. This is my new opinion. Fuck Mozilla. I don't know what they did wrong. I know people don't like them, but I don't know why. Fuck Mozilla. <laughs> um, yeah. Cute browser. Um, not, not for everyone. If you don't, or, you know, normally I'd say, like, I think generally people would say, like, if you don't, if you're not already really into Vim, then don't use Cube Browser. But I would actually say, use, maybe not Cube Browser, but maybe a, an, an add-on like Tridactyl, um, or whatever the equivalent is in whatever browser you use, um, just to, to use it in your browser, because it is genuinely makes web browsing better if you're a sort of person who likes to use the keyboard for a lot of things. It won't really help you if you're if you're a mouse type of person, if you're a very clicky type of person, um, it won't really help you. But um if you like to if you're the sort of person that likes to use the keyboard for things, um, install one of those and it will teach you Vim key bindings so that when you do learn Vim, you'll know the basics already. Like you it won't feel unnatural to you to scroll with JK uh, HL. Like that will feel normal for you. Because that's what I did. I was using well, it wasn't Tridactyl, it was Vimperator back then, which doesn't, which is discontinued, but um, I was using that years before I switched to Vim, or uh, for my text editing, um, and so when I started using Vim, scrolling with J and K was completely natural to me. Um, so, yeah, maybe, maybe give it a try. But the thing is, there's a learning curve, like, you do have to force yourself to, like, get used to the weird keep, well, they don't feel weird to me anymore. They feel very natural. But at first they felt weird because HJKL is seems like a weird assortment of random letters to press to scroll. Um, and getting your head around modes, like people, it, I suppose, I don't know. Vim, Vim, it's Vim stuff. 